silver is seven things to eat. The, refi the refining pot is for silver and the furnace for gold. But the Lord tests the heart. Okay. Now it says in a literal sense, which you up. I was looking for it. It says, who has the one where it reads about the crucible? I have that one. I'm going to read that one, please. The crucible for silver, and the furnace is for gold, and the Lord tests hearts. Mm -hmm. The crucible. In a literal sense, the crucible is a heat resistant container used to melt metals. Used to melt metals. In a spiritual sense, it is a crucible is a severe test or trial, an extremely challenging experience. Come on. A furnace. A furnace is an enclosed structure in which heat is produced for separating impurities from metal. In a spiritual sense, the furnace is causing affliction to separate one from sin to be proven. So in essence, um uh call up on the should read the uh, seventeen three real quick. The crucible is oh, right there. A crucible. So a crucible. So now we are hitting a test and trial. A extremely challenging experience first. That is the crucible we're in. Now we are trying to be tested. Why are we being tested? We need to be proven before authority. All right. Continue to read. The crucible is for silver. Mm -hmm. And the furnace is for gold. Oh, right there, Paul. The furnace. Now we are going through a, an a Affliction to separate one from sin. Mm. Now we are in a crucible. We might be in a crucible where we haven't gone through a trial and tribulation. Because we are going through trials and tribulations, we are being tested. Mm. Now, because we are in a furnace, we are being separated from sin. We are being refined. They use a furnace to separate the impurities. With gold, sometimes you get gold, it might be like 10K. In some places, it's 22K because of purity. It's a little bit more pure because it has been separated from other metals that make it even more pure. So that I said, and it's trying hard. And then the last part it says, and the Lord tests heart. Tests the heart. The heart is the soul yeah. of the man. Yeah. So the soul of the man is being tested in trials and tribulations, and he's also going through where point where he's being impure because he's trying to God is trying to remove impurity or sin within one's life so he can see that you are proven. What is proven? What does it mean to be proven? To be a good standing? Character. Is a character. What does it mean to be proven? It means that we are going to be elevated. Tested. Because like any test, once you pass a test, you move to a next level. The next level means you are elevated. So within the body, within God, now we are elevated within Christ. Because after we hit a certain stand, like in class, say, if we're doing a math, they get his math at the end of the first semester, second semester. Then after a while, it's like, I need to see if you are worthy to move to the next grade. So what do we do? We are tested. Moving. The key is you are proven to move to the next level. So just like in the body, we are tested. We are held in the crucible. We are held in the furnace to see we are enough to be elevated to the next level. Hallelujah. It's a good thing to be tested because God says you are enduring. I see you are keep us persevering. Now that we see that my son is ready for sunshine. Now that we see that this child is now able to be mature, and now he's no longer to be weaned off of milk, and now he needs to eat meat. Let's see if he's proven. Let's see if he's ready. And sometimes we wonder why, why are we going to be tested? It's because God is doing something with us. Yeah, Isn't it just because of circumstances? God has seen something with us. Okay. Now he's taking this word. All these words now in his mind or how they speak to his soul, his man, his heart. Because there's one thing for a seed to hit the mind and he's not dwelling in the seed. And then all of a sudden when another seed comes, he goes out to the air and he's like, I just go say things differently. Ah, that's just something I learned in church Sunday. Ah, it's Monday. Everybody knows how things are. It's like life happens. Mm. But the thing about it is when that seed needs to hit the heart. Why 
by the heart, because the heart is where the life is of a man, the soul of a man, because out the mouth, the heart speaks. So what is in your heart? Are you persevering? Are you continuing to endure? A lot of times we ask God, why are we, why is this happening to us? Why is this going through this? Because we are being tested. We are being proven. We are in the furnace. We need to understand what season we are in. Are we in the season where we are learning? Or are we are in the season where we are being tested? We got to see something within us. Within us. Oh, and just understand that everyone is going to be tested. Even Christ himself was tested. Yes, 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 yes. So as Christ is within us, we must go through the same things that Christ went through. Mm -hmm. So please turn with me to Matthew 4, verses 1 to 11. I promise you I will not keep you too long. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, Matthew 4, verses 11. It's funny because when I was going through this, um, God, I was doing my reading, and I was preparing, I think, say about two or three weeks, and I was like, God, I remember Mr. Somebody said, hey, I want you to speak uh, Sunday. As a matter of fact, she wanted us to speak uh, the following Sunday, but thank God the following Sunday is me and my wife's anniversary, so I was like, you know, that's not going to be a good day for us. <laughs> so uh, she said, uh, before or after, I said, ah, she said before. Oh, before then. So I went before, so as I'm a parent, and I remember my mom or my wife always says, and when you hear things twice or three times, that's God trying to reveal something. Amen. So I had gotten a word, I had gotten a word, which is a seed that God had put in my mind. And I said, ah, that's not what I want God to do. That's physical thinking too much. But as I kept going on, I came across one thing that stuck with me was Deuteronomy 18.3 in one of my, uh, my day devotional readings, I said, no, this must be me talking to me. Because I say, if, you, if God, you really want me to speak this word, give me a sign. Give me a word. Give me, tell me this is confirmation this is what you want me to speak. Hallelujah. And as I was speak, reading, this scripture came out. Something in my spirit just clicked. Now, when something in your spirit clicks, do not talk yourself out. <laughs> Do not be like, ah, walk away. That's just something I heard. It's, this is not, that's just my way of trying to gas me up. That's, that's all I think. <laughs> <laughs> ah, this, this is just my mom saying from 10 years, 20 years ago. That's, this ain't true. This ain't true. <laughs> ah, I just heard my friends be saying, I, I'm not going to do this. Well, understand, this. Do not miss your miss your call. Amen. Do not miss your opportunity. Amen. When blind Bartimaeus seen Jesus come out, he screamed out, "Jesus, Jesus!" People like, "It's fine. It's church going on. Come on, church is going on." But blind Bartimaeus knew this is my opportunity. Amen. Amen. I've been blind my whole life. Oh, yeah. I have the power oh, and the authority yeah. to change my life, That's right. to change my circumstance. So Barb Barber screams out, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> While the church folks are saying, I'm not going to church. The religious is here. <laughs> but he understood, this is my moment to get my healing. Do not miss your healing. Do not miss your opportunity. Because like I said, sometimes in life, opportunity comes one in a lifetime. And if you miss it, it might be a little lifetime before the opportunity comes around. Right. But God. But God. Let's turn with y'all. Catch up with y'all in Matthew. How about the Matthew 4? Now, this is the temptations of Jesus. It says, we're going to read through this and then we're going to do some breaking down to so kind of comprehend and understand. Sometimes as we walk, we must walk the same fight that Jesus walked. Because Jesus who is in us, also we must go through the same thing Christ is also in us. So do not be afraid. But then Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He was led into the wilderness. He is led into the world. We are in the world, but we are not of the world. Mm -hmm. And at 
after he had gone without food for 40 days and 40 nights, he became hungry. He became hungry. He went without food for 40 days and 40 nights. When we are at our weakest point is when we will be touched. That's what it says. When we are hungry, I'm I'm, 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 I'm making How many of us we are hungry? <laughs> and then somebody comes and says something, you're like, what? Okay. Just keep up in your spirit quick. Mm-hmm. I'm at my weakest point. I'm hungry. <clears throat> Matter of fact, my wife and my daughter do the same thing. Sometimes I do it without looking. When I get hungry, all of a sudden, something, not everything, my nerves are like this. <laughs> I forgot. I'm, I'm the only one speaking. I'm sorry. I don't know what happened to you. I do not like y'all. I am not as holy as y'all. I apologize. You know what I'm saying? God's working on you. Okay. He hasn't called me for him yet, but he's working on me. He hasn't got me yet. But when we get hungry now, this is when all of a sudden we get drunk about to get tested. This is when you plan to be tested. Are you passing this test? Or are you continuing continuing to do the same thing you've done before? Now we need to be humble. Because we are still here. And God needs us to be humble. Before he can elevate it here, guess what? Remember the story says, two, uh, one step forward, two steps back? <laughs> two steps back now. Now we need to be humble. Because now we were tested, God could not elevate us because something in our heart is still there. And this is right. It says, And the tempter came and said to them, If you are Son of God, command these stones to, to become bread. Mm. It's funny because now we test it. It's funny because test what is this test about? This is the category of a lust of the flesh. The flesh is being tested. I'm hungry. Get out of my way. I haven't eaten a day. I've been fasting all day, so at 6 o'clock, I'm okay to be for me to be angry. <laughs> <laughs> I've been fasting this morning time, so at 12 o'clock, don't say nothing to me. Because I am holy. I am righteous. I am, I am high. I, I go to church. I read every day. I, I, I read more than you. I read two chapters. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh really? When the whole time God wants us here, uh-huh. makes us the dirt, but we are here. And it says, "But Jesus replied to us, replied, it is written, and for remains written, man shall not live by bread alone, by every word that comes out the mouth of God. Mm. Now this is good. What God had, he had a godly wisdom with them. And not only did he have a godly wisdom, he had the knowledge, he had the knowledge to, within him to use that wisdom. Why? Because God is within him, within the Christ. Therefore, Christ is within us. So why are we not using the godly wisdom we have get from reading his word and the knowledge within him, which is our Holy Spirit, to understand what we are being tested? We need to understand these things. Tests are coming. Will you pass? Will you be elevated? Jesus. But does God have to make you up? Yeah. It says, Then the devil took him into a holy city and placed him on the pinnacle, the highest point of the temple. And he said mockingly to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to serve, care, and protect, and watch over you. And they will lift you up on their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to them, on the other hand, it was written and forever remains written, you shall not test the Lord your God. How did he begin? He's been trusted with the rest of us. Ah, what is it? Especially speaking for men, men read the God by what we see. Men are more visual learners. I'm not more of a feeling, a nurture, a feeling on the more of a heart. But men, when we see things, it only takes but a couple of seconds for that that thought, that seed, to hit our heart. 
So we need to guide what we see. Everything we see, like I said, is the right to see something that we ain't supposed to see. It may not be right, but it's in mind. This is when that godly wisdom, remember, humility, the first thing about humility is understanding, being humble, we need to understand our, where we are, our place in life, where we are in the physical body. And understand and have a reverent spirit. A reverent spirit is a godly wisdom. So it operates as being a wise man, we need to have a godly wisdom about our standing within the place of God, within the body of Christ. And also we need to understand about ourselves. If we know that men, especially men, and I'm speaking of this, if we have an understanding that, look, we, as a man, are more of a visual person, guess what? We need to guard against what we see. In some places, we do not need to be. In some places, we do not need to be at because there's certain scenery that we do not need to be in. Because now we see that scene, it first starts here, then it gets in the heart. Then when it gets in the heart, now it's spread roots because now it's where good soil is in your heart. Remember the seed sword is the sword. It's your heart of good soil. Because the good soil, the good seed, no matter what the seed is, it will sprout. Even a weed will sprout in the soil. A vine of unrighteousness will sprout. You know why? Because that's good soil. Oh my God. And like I said, again, the devil took him up in a very mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in glory, splendor, magnificence, excellence of them. And he said, all these things I will give you if you fall down and worship them. Mm. Pride of life. Mm. Now, pride is the very opposite of humility. Mm. It's funny because when is he appealing to Christ, trying to the Christ? Brought him up. When we are on a, a high level, like, wow, I'm doing really good. I'm just feeling great at my job. Got promotion and raise. I'm doing great. And I'm getting the pride comes in. I need to get a great job. Good building, house. You got the best thing since sliced bread. You had a team, but you was on Michael Jordan with the team. <laughs> you scored all the points. But realistically, Michael Jordan had a great team. He didn't just play defense by himself. Okay. He didn't just rebound by himself. He didn't, he didn't just pass the ball by himself. He didn't just block shots by himself. It was a team effort. So are you humble enough to understand that when you're at the highest point of the pinnacle, when you think you're doing well, remember, this is from the pride of I'm, I'm good. Ain't nobody good me at my job. I'm the best in here. Why? Because like I said, if you look at it in the spiritual sense, it says, it says, and the devil came up on a very high mountain. Now, when it says, in the physical sense, he brought on the mountain. In a spiritual sense, he is up here. He is brought up, up high. Now, when you up on the high, are you humble enough to lower yourself to understand that, look, I may have gotten here, but I didn't get here by myself. The source of my strength, my redeemer, is giving me strength to get up here for this thing. Do you understand that, or do you want the, the, the plot of life to indulge you? And then it says, Then Jesus said to him, Go away, Satan, for it is written, for it remains. You shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and the angels came and ministered to him, bringing him food and serving him. Now, look at this. As soon as he scripture. Remember, God is within him, and he also had his godly wisdom to know how to use scripture. How did he do this? Because he had the 
word within you. Do you have that word within you? Can you pull up scriptures in times when you are being tested? Do you know the scriptures? Do you know what scriptures to go to? Now with Google, it should be easy. Just Google it. If you need help, you can Google it. Not only is the world using Google, but you can use Google yourself being a child of God. Until now, that scripture is written on your heart. And then, look, it says, Then the devil left, and the angels came and ministered him, bringing him food and serving him. Now, after being tested, Christ was humble enough to understand he was being tested. And not only that, once he passed the test, his reward was a little bit. He was hungry. He's been out there for 40 days and 40 minutes. Now, he was nourishing the food. He was satisfied. That was the reward. And the angels came and tended to him. So once you're being tested, what is your reward? You're being elevated. But we need to know what is the, when you are tested, what is going to happen. Remember, it says, why are we just, we are tested to reveal what, to reveal whether what's in our heart. Will we live by our own wisdom, which according to James 3, 15 through 17, is a earthly wisdom or an intellectual wisdom. Remember, a lot of us are so in tune with earth or what people say that we trust within our own self. We trust in the earthly wisdom. What man says. We trust our own intellect. That is an intellectual wisdom or an earthly wisdom. An earthly wisdom is a lot of times that sometimes what we learn through a lineage. What we are born, born into what we know, grow to understand. That is the earthly wisdom. Some of us have an earthly wisdom we need to break. Yeah. Understand that this is the best we'll ever get from it. Because we don't have no vision of our life. We must first have a vision of our life to actually break an earthly wisdom. If you have no vision, how far can you go if you have no vision? You need to have a vision of what God has set before you. If He says, if man says you'll be one thing, God has said you will be another. Do you have that vision? Even in the earthly world, some great entrepreneurs, they always said they have a vision. I remember when me and my wife first got really married, got married, and uh, uh, one of my uh, Great mentor, uh, Mr. Ron, uh, Ron Holmes, I call him my guy there, but he told me, when we were doing a little marriage, I was talking about marriage, he said, uh, told me, he said, you need to have a vision for your marriage. You know, I said, yeah, I'm doing a five-year plan, what do you see yourself moving to? First thing that came to my mouth, I was like, exactly, this is back to the way it's I ain't got no reason. Okay. You know what I'm saying? This, this kind of looks nice right now. You know what I'm saying? I just, in the apartment, a uh, uh, little trailer, too, I'm thinking, vision. I'm, I'm good with this kind of man. I mean, it's all best to get them. But some of them, I kept dwelling on I kept thinking, why are you talking about this, 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 and that, this, and that? And after a while, I kept dwelling on vision and vision. I said, you know what? I said, okay, I'll tell you what. I, I, want, I want to get a house. You know what I'm saying? I might get a house. You know, I don't know. Credit's kind of. Hey, up right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put him this test. I'm going to put God this test. I'm going to put you around my thing. But I knew God was using this to run to speak through him to me. So I put him in test. And I remember, uh, I think Josiah just been born. I came in one day and the price was busted. They had, uh, they, it was old school where they used copper pies going to a staff. And everybody knows they use copper pies going to a staff. When it gets cold, they bust. Mm-hmm. And nothing is more defeating than coming home from a long day, house full of carpet, and here is muddy water everywhere. Mm-hmm. Oh boy. I, I can't, I can't, I can't hurt him up. Like, this is mm-hmm. depressing to come home and see 
see the money will have conflict. And then have to go to that HOA, go, oh, whoa, oh, we got to be cost effective. I'm thinking, oh, uh, what do I do? Well, I said, I mean, that's all I said, I said, this is how I put this to the test. How I put this to the test. I got to have a vision, you know? Because with vision, I have boundaries. Because if I have a vision for my life, there's certain things I cannot do. My vision was to have a house, so I can't go spend it for the street. Now I'm more an insane inside. Now when I go so spend, I got to get my credit right. Because I have a vision. Yeah. Now I got to go on a straight and narrow. Stay on that narrow path as much as possible because I have a vision for my life. And then God gave me that vision. And just so happened, that vision was coming through. This is when God was really trying to my heart. Because at the time, me and God weren't seeing things eye to eye. Mm -hmm. But He still loved me and had a yeah, tough fit yeah. to send a messenger to get to me. Amen. And He knew how to get to me. Amen. He put me through a crucible and a furnace. Mm -hmm. I had to be humble. And now He had tested me. And now He's testing me to see if I will trust and obey. So I trust and obey him. Now God, stop me with that. I'm thankful. Me and my family got me with that. Then I'm thinking, you know what? He used my wife this time to put another seed. It says, it says, if the seed finds a wife, finds a good thing. And I'll pay for it. And God gave me the and then what he had, my wife said, you know what, babe? I need another house. I'm like, okay. Hold my ball break. <laughs> you know, we paying a mortgage for a car. I had to pay a mortgage, you know. I mean, it's a little different. It's a got me on paper, you know. So. <laughs> it's a little different here, you know. It's pretty, it's pretty cool to get through this person real quickly. But she planted that seed, so I started thinking like, Like I'm a pariah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a 
doing the same thing with me. Offering me all these credit cards without a job either. Too. They like.
And God is with us. This is according to Proverbs 7, 7 verses 1. Let's go turn to Proverbs 7. In Proverbs 1, verse 7. Uh, I'm sorry. Proverbs 7, verse 1. Let's go to the
fool or those areas of fools. Those are the ones who live by a earthly wisdom, an intellectual wisdom, and a devilish wisdom. Those same individuals, the one was tested, like, you know what? I do it my way. Like French and I say, I do it my way. I don't need no advice. I, I do it my way. Why don't you want to do it my way? Because he's not humble. He's up here. Operating on his own intellectual wisdom. Operating on what he was told when he was a child. Operating by the ways of the world. The thing about when we be tested, though, there's also, like Christ said before, there's a reward for when we are tested and passed. Just like in school, just like in life. When we are tested, we pass, we move on. I'm going to tell you, sometimes we got to take certification to move to the next level. Once I pass those certifications, guess what? I am elevated to another level because I am certified that I know how to do certain aspects of my job that others don't know how to do. Because I was tested, I endured the process, and then I was proven. And now I'm proven, here's my reward. So again, I tell you when we start talking more in depth about the reward, let's go to James 1, and we're going to be at verse 3 and verse 12. Now we're going to talk about reward. We talked about how we are tested. We are tested, but talked about tested, tested to, like I said, by our flesh. We are tested by the lust of our eye. We are tested through the fire. These are tests that we must be asking, we must overcome. All right. Now, after we pass the test and see that we are proven, let's talk about the reward. Because like any life, once you pass a test, where is my reward? Where is my reward? about rewards, just like rewards, um, story related to my son, uh, I remember he was like, hey, uh, Dad, that, I'm going to get my drip, bro. Drip, I'm going to get some stuff, bro. 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 I'm going Buying your shoes, you tear them up and throw them in the back of the car. And I was looking at the shoes, be mad. They're like, now I'm wasting my money for them. You come pick these shoes up. So I said, You got the tool. I said, Hey, this here, uh, it's crazy, ain't doing so good right now. I said, If you want to get this shoe drip up, I said, You got to persevere and get some better bread. I need ABR. Okay. Oh, man, but I'm uh, no, 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 I gotta spend my money, I gotta see some kind of reward. I gotta see some return on my investment. I'm gonna start buying shoes and all that look and shoes and coin, but up. Better look, better look next Dad. These it is. Hey be on over. See the ones that you did it before. So I'm saying I said, all right, you know, I said, we we talked about it and prayed for it. I'm gonna see. What are you gonna do? So as he come home, and this division stuff. I said, we're working division. Yeah. And nowadays, they got this new division style. Yeah. It's called uh, kosher something. I said, man, yeah, oh, that's the, you do that stuff in the olden days. <laughs> <laughs> that's the olden days. Oh, 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 that's the olden days. Another way. Another way. What's the 
Oh, no, not the comic card. No, that's right. So then all of a sudden he showed me like, hey, Dan, um, he showed me a way where he was able to have the knowledge to combine the new way and what the old way I was showing and came up with this way. And I was looking at him like, I don't know if you you can't do comic core in old school math. That's nonsense. I just thought he's doing the worst when he works. Just keep doing it. It does work. I said, I see what you're doing. I said, it works. So he's persevering. Okay. You know, every day he asked my wife, I said, 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 they kept pushing forward, pushing forward. And huh. as you know, Fort Clark came out. And uh, he walked in and said, Dad, I'm going to show you something. First thing he did, he handed me a certificate. What is this? He's like, this is A.D. Honorable Party Friday. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I said, A.D. Honorable Party Friday? Don't we like to give me one of this? Check the Intercept College School. So he was able to push forward and endure, <laughs> persevere to find himself proven to find his reward. And it's the same thing we in the body of Christ will be doing when we're tested. So let's read uh, James 1, verse 3. And it says, Be assured that testing of your faith or experiences produces endurance, leading to spiritual maturity and inner peace. James talks about being tested, testing of our faith, and it produces endurance, perseverance. Sometimes we don't get it right the first time. Do you quit? Nope. Just like my son, he had to figure out another way to do this. So he had to persevere, endure. By persevering and enduring, he was able to be approved. Approved is he passed his test. His award, I'm going to show you what it is. For real? Let me see. Now, jump down to verse 12. It says, Okay. <laughs> happy, spiritual, prosperous, favored by God hmm. is a man who is steadfast under trial and perseveres. When tempted, for when he passed the test and been approved, he will receive the victor's crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Blessed, blessed, I mean, anointed is the man who is steadfast in the trial and perseveres. So, anointed is the man who goes through the crucible. Anointed is the man who is in the furnace. Anointed. Is the man who is refined. Anointed is the man who separates himself from his sin. By separating yourself from his sin, you must come to understand sin is within you. You must recognize the sin within yourself. You can't be prideful and be like, you know, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I don't know who they talk about. <laughs> Church folks, I'm good. Are you humble or realize, Father God, I, I'm a man. Help. And here it is. For well, when he has passed the test and been approved, so when we pass the test, just like when uh, gold or silver goes to the crucible furnace, it is a refinement process. Once it's been set, once the impurities within the gold have been separated, Process. Now all of a sudden, you place it on there for a war. Like, oh, look at this. What is that reward? The reward is the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. It says, it says, and to James describes the promised future as threefold process, which includes perseverance, which is our responsibility. We are responsible for perseverance. That is on us. That is not on God. The test is in front of you. Are you going to persevere and keep pushing forward, or are you going to quit? 
the reason God is testing you is because he keeps something within you. So are you going to persevere? Approval, which is God's choice. That is in James 1.12. He's talking about approval. Once God sees that you are fit to move to the next level, you are approved. You have passed this test. The reward, the reward is based on God's promise to us. So what is God's promise? It is what he said, the promise of life. In practical sense, we can see that rewards come at the end of an effort. Those who are rewarded must be qualified to receive the reward. They will be approved by an authority, a authority, a judge. In this case, what God calls us to prove is a man who perseveres on the trial because he can expect to receive the approval of God, who is the ultimate judge and the authority. And that, that approval is a great reward. And that great reward is a crown of life. Hmm. One thing to kind of really put this in context to help us understand what they are referring to. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians 9, verses 24 through 25. This is Paul writing about an Olympic athlete doing the Olympic Games. Anything know, if I know anything about an athlete, there is a very narrow path that you must follow. There's a certain diet you must follow. A certain workout regimen you must follow. There is a certain sleep pattern you must follow. They are in a stringent regimen. It was straight and narrow. Why? Because they are getting their body to endure the long haul because they are trying to receive <coughs> an award after they are approved by their peers and the ones around the authority figures who's handing out the gold that they are the best. They are ready. So let's start with verses 24, and it says, Do you not know that a race, all the runners run, they're very best to win, but only one receives the prize. Run your race in such a way that you may see the prize that may be yours. Now, every athlete who goes into training and completes in the game is disciplined, is exercised in self-control in all things. As Christians, we must exercise self-control. That is one of the fruits of the Spirit that we must exercise. And it says, they do it to win a crown that withers, but we do it to receive an imperishable crown that cannot wither. An imperishable crown that cannot wither. I did a lot of research to understand what they mean by the crown of glory or the crown of life that God's promised to. You know? In the natural, we look for things in the natural, but in the spiritual, God is elevating you spiritually within the body of Christ. So by our perseverance, and God sees our perseverance, He is the authority, the judge, the redeemer, the almighty. Now he sees and says, this is my son who I approve. Now he gives them a reward. The reward is he puts them before everybody in splendor and says, tell him, this is my son. I find great joy with him for his perseverance. So what the crown represents the glory, the blessing, and the elevation of a true believer Forever in the presence of the Lord. Because now he says, This is my son. Just like I see my son and my daughter, I love them. The reason why I love them because they are my son and my daughter. I stay have my favor over somebody I do not know. They are proved to me. So when they come, they get my reward because I see them as a proof. And it says, passing the test also increases elevation and increase in one's life. Now, it's funny because now in the Bible, I'm going to try to discuss with you about people who, uh, who also have to be elevated, the reward when they pass the test, and are elevated and increased both 
and the natural hope of the spirit. So you can't play there with me a little bit more minute. Turn to Daniel 6, verses 1 through 28. Skim through this for the sake of time. This is, let's we'll start from verse 01. Like I said, I'm going to skim through some of this just for the sake of time. It says, and see God. Good to Darius, who became king after uh, uh, Belazar, to appoint over the kingdom 120 satraps who would be in charge without the kingdom, throughout the kingdom. And over them, three chief commissioners, of whom Daniel was one. And these uh, satraps might be accountable to them, for the king would not admit to have no law. Then, this uh, Daniel, because of his sword and skill with him, became distinguished himself among the commissioners and set the satraps. Daniel concerning the administration of the kingdom. But they would not find no reason to accuse or evidence of corruption because he was faithful and no negligence of corruption was found in him. And it says, then this we jump down to verse 6. It says, Then the commission shall agree to approach the king and said to the young king, There is live forever. All the commissions of the kingdom, the perfect, the prefect, and the fair trap, and the council, and the government have consulted and agreed together that the king should establish a royal stature in force in injunction that who petition any god or besides you. O king, during the next 30 days shall be thrown into the lion's den. Now, O king, establish the injunction and sign the document so that it will not be changed in accordance with the law of the many and virgin, which ensures that you may not offer or revoke it. Now, during this time, when a king makes that edict or decree, it cannot be changed. Mm -hmm. There is no, oh, we're going to go to Congress and veto it, give it to veto it. It is what it is. The only way it could be changed is if the king sets another pre uh, edict or the overrule what he just established. But in doing so, he risks the chance of revolt. Uh, now, this was this time saying it says, and then, you know, Daniel, his obedience was being tested by God. For he knew what the king established, that if you keep praying for your God, that you could be thrown in the lion's den. But Daniel himself was obedient to God before the king. How many of you are, of us are obedient to God or are we obedient to man? By being obedient to man, you operate in what we call an earthly or an intellectual wisdom. Therefore, you do not operate in a godly system. And sometimes we forfeit our blessing because we are disobedient to his word. And then the king asked to jump down to... Verse 13, it says, Then they answered and said to before the king, Daniel, who was one of the exiles from Judah, does not pay attention to you, O king, or in a junction you have signed, but things pray, but keep things, keep praying to the God for three times a day. Then, the, then, as soon as the king heard these words, he was deeply distressed over what he had done and sent, mind, sent his mind on rescuing Daniel, and he struggled until his son went down, trying to work out a way to save him. Then by agreement, these same men came to the king and said, O oh, king, oh, now know, O oh, king, that it is the law of Medes the Persians that no injunction of statute, which the king of statute may be altered or revoked. Key points here. <clears throat> All right? It says, not only was Daniel being tested, but King Darius himself 
was being tested through his obedience. Sometimes when we go through a test, just because our relationship with someone else, they will be tested as well. The closest person who's going to be tested usually is someone in authority or maybe somebody within your lineage. And it says the reason why the king there is he was, could not go and beat uh, Edith is three things. It says if he went back on Edith, he risked an instability within a nation, a possible overthrow of leadership. And with an overthrow of leadership, that could cause a cue, cue. And the first thing in a, a cue, a cue is they kill all your family. Yeah. Get rid of them. That says, and the Jews would have suffered even more oppressive regime if another regime came in because they had already did not like Daniel. But if he came in, guess what? Now the Jews will really be oppressed. And not only that, but Daniel's life would have not, would not been spared by King Darius, was actually overthrown. So we will push forward. It says, and then the king uh, gave command and, gave, uh, and Daniel was brought and thrown into the den. The king said to Daniel, may your God, who you constantly serve, rescue himself. A stone was brought and placed in the mouth of the den. The king sealed it with a signed signet ring and then signet ring of the nobles so that nothing would change concerning Daniel. We go down to uh, verse 9. Then the king arose at dawn and break the day and hurried to the lion den. When he had come near to the den, he called out to Daniel with a troubled voice. The king said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, as your God, whom you constantly serve, has been rescued from the lion den. And then Daniel spoke to him, O king, live forever. My God has sent angels and shut the mouth of the lion so that it would have not hurt you, because I was found innocent before him. And also before you, O king, I have committed no crime. Now, through Daniel's obedience, for the sake of time, it says, uh, we're going to jump down now. These enemies and families were killed as restitution because they came against an anointed and blessed child of God. God used the same king they served to chop, chop them down. And this is very important by his enemy being killed in Russia. This act prevented the seeds of the family from taking revenge on him. And it also illustrated what would happen to those who oppose Daniel and his God. If I know that if I go against one man that it could cost me and my family life, what are the chances that someone will go against this person? I know. And said, so not only that, but the Jews were allowed to continue to worship their God freely. Remember, these same church rats were trying to push down or repel the Jews, not allow them to worship their God for them. But not only that, now they have more liberty, more freedom. What was thought for our good was actually, what was thought for our bad was actually for our good. I said, and the Jews continue to walk in the blessings of Abraham because of the being. Now it says, he broke off down to verse 28. It says, so this man, Daniel, prospered and enjoyed success in the reign of Darius and the reign of Cyrus and the Persians, during the reign of the Persians who were Muslims. Yet here it is, a Jew who was actually seen more success, more wealth, greater blessing. And now because of his obedience, not only did him, but also the Jews also continued to walk in the blessings of Abraham. And also, I said, we also just talk about being humble. We talk about being tested. We talk about how our humility actually can cause us to be exalted. So if you will bear with me, turn to Luke 18, 9, verses 14. And he also told his parables to some people who trusted in themselves and were confident that they were righteous. This is the story of the Pharisees and the Sabbath. Holding outwardly and upwardly in the right standing with God and who would use others for contempt. Two men went up into the temple to pray for one Pharisee and the other for a tax. Now, Pharisees is more what we call church folks. And the tax collector is what we call the sinner, the average man. All right? It says the Pharisees stood 
the number used in the Amplified, that the Pharisees stood ostentatiously. Ostentatiously. I have to look that word up, to be honest with you. It says the word ostentatious means attracting or seeking to attract attention, admiration, or envy, often by gaudiness or obviousness, overly elaborate or suspicious. So it was very overly elaborate suspicious and began praying to themselves in self-righteous way, saying, God, I think that I am not like the rest of them. I am not a scandal. I am not a judge. I am not an adulterer. So even like this person over here, the pastor or a sinner, I, I fast twice a week. I pay tithes for all of that shit. But the tax collector, standing at a distance, That he was a sinner. He was a sinner. And it says, I tell you, this man, and God says, I tell you, this man went to his home justified, forgiven of his guilt, and placed in right standing with God, rather than that of the other man. For everyone who exalts himself, exalts himself, will be humble. If you exalt yourself, you bring yourself up here. But God said he will be brought with him. But he who humbles himself for sake of righteous pride will be exalted. Because he is humble, he will be lifted up. How many of us are humble? And understand that when we are being tested, why we are being tested, because now we're being prepared for elevation. So I hope people found something within the lesson that God gave you. And I thank y'all for allowing me to share this the other day. Amen. Amen. Amen.